Oh boy, do I have a story for you. <laughs> First of all, I wanna say thank you NVIDIA for sponsoring today's video. I've got a juicy color grading video for you guys today, but you might be thinking, doesn't Becky use a Mac? Isn't that Chris's PC? Why yes, this is Chris's computer. Last week, we posted a short film on our channel called The City That Changed Our Life. If you haven't seen it, I will link it up here. That video we've been working on for a few months and we had it all cut together. The animations were done. We were just about to go into color grading. My 2013 Mac Pro that I've been using for years finally kick the bucket. We had one week, one week to finish this video. Suddenly I start seeing speckles, red, green, blue. I don't like red. So I said, dear Google, what are these speckles that are happening on my screen? And it turns out my GPU was dying. If you guys don't know what a GPU is, it's your video card in your computer. It stands for graphics processing unit. And it's what your computer uses to speed up the rendering of images and videos on your computer and to make sure that they display correctly on your monitor. The apps we use to color grade like Adobe Premiere Pro are really GPU intensive. So if your GPU isn't working or isn't fast enough, then you're gonna have a lot of issues or your computer's gonna shut down like 10 times in one hour and then you're just gonna be freaking out because your video's not done and you have one week to color grade and then your computer just won't stay on. Like I could not, I could, one adjustment, shut down. Thankfully we had this RTX Studio laptop here with the 2080 graphics card and this swooped in and saved my ass and I color graded the entire film on this computer and um, it was fast and delightful actually. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how we color grade our studio shots. So I have Premiere Pro open here. Now I've actually already done some work on this clip. So this is a talking head clip that we normally use from our studio. So we have the black walls, we have some practicals in the background. So I've got some adjustments done on this already. I'll turn off the adjustment layer so I can show you kind of how we started. So this is how the clip looks out of the camera. So we shoot all of our videos in S-Log2. So I made an adjustment layer and I've tossed a log to Rec 709 LUT on there. That's a utility LUT that converts the log footage to Rec 709. So it adds back in that contrast. If you are shooting log, depending on what camera you're shooting on, you can probably find a LUT that your camera manufacturer has made for log footage. Obviously, as you can see, the shot is super pink. It doesn't look very neutral. It doesn't look great. So I've already gone ahead and done the primary correction. We're gonna be talking about color grading in this video, which is kind of the pizzazz we put on at the end to make the clip look nice, to stylize the clip. So I've gone ahead already and done the primary correction. So I'll turn that adjustment layer on. And as you can see, the shot is a little bit more neutral. So I added a new adjustment layer to my bin and I'm just gonna drag this here down into the timeline. We're gonna extend that adjustment layer so it's the complete size of the clip. I've got a full minute of footage in this timeline here. So I got my adjustment layer here. Now I need to bring up all of the things that I need for color grading. So I'm gonna open the Lumetri color panel and I'm gonna open my scopes. So we've got our vector scope over here and our RGB parade here and we're gonna be using that as we go through to do our color correction because we want to make sure that we're not crushing out our blacks or blowing out our whites and making sure that our colors are kind of sitting where they're supposed to be sitting. This, can I, hang on, just one second, stay there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that should do the trick. Oh yeah, that's better, okay. Let's actually get to the color grading. We're gonna select that adjustment layer. We're gonna put this on top of everything. This is just how we like to do it. This is how we find we get the best result. So because we're just doing the color grading right now in today's video, we're gonna start with adding some blue to the shadows. If you guys watch our videos, you know we like that kind of blue, cool, desaturated look. So I am going to come down to creative and come down here to shadow tint. I'm just gonna click on this target and I'm gonna start pulling that down into the blues and turquoises and we're gonna watch that kind of change here. And you can see like if I go all the way, it adds a lot of blue, but we don't want that much blue. So we're just gonna adjust it until we like it. Obviously it's changing our skin tones here and we look dead. We don't wanna look dead. So we're gonna change the tint balance. We're gonna bring that back and that's basically gonna preserve our highlights and just focus that shadow tint on the shadows. Okay, so now we have a little bit of blue in the shadows. We like that. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is mask out our skin and warm that up a little bit. So I'm gonna come down here to the HSL secondary panel and I'm gonna click red because normally our skin tones kind of sit in that red yellow area. Um, and then I'm gonna come here and click off this mask and you can see that everything kind of goes grayed out and we're just kind of selecting what the reds are in the clip here. Come over here and look at our vector scope. You can see this like little white blob. We're gonna use my terminology because that's how I like to do things. White blob, that's what it's called. And it's kind of sitting here on that skin tone line between red and yellow. 
Um, it's a little bit on the pink side, so we're gonna wanna use this line here as a reference to tweak our skin tones. Now, if you come over here, you can see that some of our neck are not selected. So what I'm gonna do is just come over here and grab this carrot and just kind of drag it over a little bit until all of the skin is selected. That did a pretty good job of selecting our skin tones, but obviously the mask here is pretty rough. So we can come down here to the refine portion here and we can just bring these sliders up to denoise and blur the mask. And this will help feather out the adjustment as we slide to the right, it's making the mask softer. So we have our selection made, but we haven't made any adjustments yet. So usually what I do is come down here to temperature. And I'm gonna adjust my temperature slider up towards the warm tones. And at the same time, I'm over here looking at my scopes to see where that white blob is facing. And we're gonna want that to be right between the yellow and the red. And that's kind of where it's looking now. And I'm gonna turn off the mask so I can get a better idea of what this looks like all together. Now, when you turn off the mask, obviously your vector scope is gonna represent the entire shot and not just the skin tones you've masked out. Now, as I'm doing this, you might be wondering why I'm doing the skin tones right now. I have a tendency to make adjustments on everything and go back and tweak things. So I'm not doing like everything in the basics first and then going down to my curves and then going down to my skin tones, which it's probably the way that would be best to do it. Grading is kind of subjective the way it looks. So it's constantly tweaking, looking at your scopes, looking at your clips, seeing if you like it, and then going back and tweaking things. So we're kind of happy with the skin tones here. I'll probably will come back to that later. Let's come back up to our basic corrections now. And we're gonna have a look at our RGB parade. We've got some highlights that are hitting above 100 IRA. So we're gonna bring them down using the highlight slider. So you can see in the reds here, just bringing that down a little bit. And we're gonna bring our whites down a little bit as well. We don't wanna have super pure whites or super pure blacks. That's kind of the look that we like, but I do find that this is a little bit dusty. I'm gonna bring the blacks down a little tiny bit. Now, obviously I just did that. And you can see on the histogram here that the shadows are completely crushed down past zero IRE. That's not looking so great. So let's reset that. And if I click over in this adjustment, I can actually do fine adjustments using the arrows by hitting down or up on my arrows. So about there looks okay. So hit enter. I think I wanna add a little bit more coolness to the shot. So I'm gonna go into the temperature slider and I'm gonna drop the temperature down a little bit to the bluer side, cool that off a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna just pop a little bit of contrast on here until I think it looks nice. I think that's looking pretty good. So if we turn on and off our adjustment layer, we can kind of see how much we've done to the clip already. So it's definitely a bit more cooler. The highlights are, you know, less white. I'm sorry about the squeaking in my chair. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down here to the curves here. If this confuses you, Chris did an entire masterclass on curves. I'll link it up here. Highly recommend watching it because when you know how to use curves, the opportunity is endless. You can actually do all of your corrections in curves. So if we come down here, we'll look at hue versus saturation. We're gonna look at that curve first. Um, obviously you can see a gradient of color here. So any point on this curve here, it represents a color in the image. So if I make a selection on that curve, I can adjust the saturation of a particular hue in the video. So if I select the blues, I can make a point here and a point here. If I drag up on the curve, you can see the blues get super saturated and if I drag it down you can see that it sucks the blue right out of it while maintaining skin tones the greens the rest of the colors in the shot so this is where you're going to make those selective colors where you're going to tweak those colors to look the way you want it to to reset this adjustment just double click on your points brings that blue back so I'm going to change that blue to a little bit of a turquoise look so I'm going to come down here to hue versus hue and this is where you're gonna select a hue and then change that hue or adjust that hue in the curves here. So again, if I select my blues, I'm just gonna kind of select around here and here, making two points so I can lock all of the tones beyond that. So all of the reds, greens, yellows, and pinks are locked. And I'm only gonna be selecting and adjusting the blues here. So again, if I make a point in the center, if I bring it up, you can see that the blues in the shot turn green turn yellow, but our skin tones pretty much stay the same. Same with if I bring them down here, we can make them purple. It kind of starts to fall apart a little bit. You wanna be soft on these adjustments because they can look really bad. So you gotta be careful here, but I'm gonna bring this um, 
hue versus hue curve up a little bit. We're gonna tint those shadows a bit more green. This is giving us a bit more finer control than the color wheel did up top when we were adding the tint to the shadows. Those are kind of the curves adjustments that I like to use. You can really change the tones of your colors. I'm going to use the curves now, the RGB curves, and I'm gonna add a little bit of an S curve to give it a little bit more contrast. So sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. We wanna make sure that we're watching the histogram because we don't want to crush our blacks or blow out our highlights. So I'm just gonna add like a slight S curve here to make this a little more contrasty. And that's looking okay here. So we turn that on and off, that's what it looks like. Our faces are looking a little bit dark, so we're gonna come up to the basic correction again and we're just gonna boost up the shadows a little tiny bit. And then we're gonna come back down to our HSL secondary. Let's turn that mask back on. And we can also bring up the exposure of that selected part of the clip. If we bring that slider down, it brings the exposure of our face down. If we bring it all the way up, obviously it blows it out. Um, so we don't want to go too heavy on the adjustments there, but we can just adjust that up a little tiny bit. Right, let's turn that off, on. So we're going to do one more adjustment. Sometimes I like to add a vignette to add focus to the shot. So we're going to come down here to vignette. I'm going to drop that down a little bit. Now, right off the bat, it's not great looking. What I like to do is adjust the roundness. So obviously if it goes all the way to the left, it's just a little bit less round and all the way to the right, it's more round. I like to round it out a lot. Bring the midpoint in. I like to feather that out so it's really subtle. The amount there is at negative 0.5, it's a bit heavy. So I'm gonna go negative 0.2 and that just kind of gives it a little bit of focus. Let's one final time look back at the intro. So here's where we started log footage right out of the camera. We add our log to rec 709 LUT. So that's what it looks like, very pink looking. Then we do our basic corrections using all of the Lumetri color panel, mostly the basic corrections to get that looking neutral. And it actually looks pretty good here, but then we can take it a step further with our color grading and that's where we stylize. We turn that on and it's a bit more blue, it's a little more contrasty. So that is how we color grade our clips in Adobe Premiere Pro using Lumetri. We went through the basic corrections, curves, the HSL sliders, the HSL secondary where we masked in our skin tones and were able to adjust that selectively. And of course the hue versus hue and hue versus saturation curves, those are very powerful. This computer has been a joy to work on and it really saved my ass during that film. Um, again, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here. It's been an interesting week. My computer died. We had an external hard drive die as well. Thankfully, we had this editing beast here and Chris was nice enough to let me use this computer. First of all. To, oh my God, why did I you didn't, just came out of nowhere? It just came out of the, out of the sound blankets. And I literally- You can't see anything because of the light here. You're blinded by the light. Uh, yeah, I didn't let you use it. First of all, what? you just yes, used you it. Yes, you did. Second, look, for the record, Becky Peckham is using a PC. It's happening. She's using a PC. She never said she would, and she's using this piece, <laughs> and she's using this mouse, too. Listen, I can get down with a PC, but this mouse, please, if, you, you, if you're a PC user, if you're an editor, please give Chris some suggestions on mouses, mice, look, in the description, in the, descri if in the comments, broke, please. Don't fix it. This mouse has tried and true for over I, a decade. Let, let, $12 Canadian. I have Canadian. one question. I have one question. $12 Canadian. Okay. That's like $8 US. I have one question. In 2008. Wow. It's a 12 year old mouse. $1 per year. This is my husband. Point Chris three. Nicholas. All right, so that's it, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you so much, NVIDIA, for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Laptop, for being there for me when my other computer died and I had to do a video and I couldn't do it and you were there for me and just did it. With that said, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post a video. Is that the outro? Yeah. Okay, see you on the next one. V's PC. Melon key. <laughs> On to my story. So last week we posted. <laughs> so distracting. I'm surprised this doesn't have a ball inside of it. You know the egg, the middle of the egg when you overcook the. Where's the window? This chair is a problem. Please hold. It's driving. Righty tighty, lefty limbs. It's not the right size Allen key. Bag that. Boys, you're gonna have to deal with the squeaks now. Kind of normal. Not <laughs> normal. I have this weird mouse from 2002. What well, yours is from? 2002. We're rolling with it. Set up. Not used to having one display. Where's my project bin? H, S, L, secondary. I know it's really cute in theory, but in practice it's terrible. No, it works great. I mean, it works for internet browsing. No, it works for, I use it for everything.